Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. I'm Lori Harada, the Executive Director of Anaphylaxis Canada. As part of our National Food Allergy Awareness Month, we're very pleased to have Dr. Ann Clark here with us today to talk about food allergy in Canada. Dr. Clark is a professor in the divisions of clinical immunology, allergy, and clinical epidemiology in the Department of Medicine at McGill University in Montreal, Quebec. She and her team at McGill University have conducted studies on this important topic with Health Canada with funding support from Allergen NCE Inc. Dr. Clark, thanks so much for joining us here today. Recently, your research team has had an abstract published in a leading allergy journal which focused on the prevalence of food allergy in Canada. Can you tell us what did your research find? So, Lori, we surveyed a large number of people in Canada. In effect, we surveyed about 10,000 individuals. And we asked these individuals whether or not anybody had, any of them, had a food allergy. So we found that about 7% of Canadians self-report at least one food allergy. Oh, interesting. Can you explain, what do you mean by self-report? So basically, we asked the individual, do you have a food allergy? And if they said yes, we considered that self, a self-reported food allergy. Now, for certain foods, those being uh, peanut, tree nut, fish, shellfish, and sesame, if they indicated they did have an allergy, we asked them much more detailed questions about the symptoms they had when they ate that particular food so that we could tell with a little bit more certainty whether or not their self-reported allergy was likely to represent a doctor-diagnosed allergy. Interesting. Um, so were there any surprises when you did the research that came out of the data? Well, there were some interesting things, certainly. Um, I think perhaps the most startling thing is that many individuals who indicated that they had had uh, symptoms when they ate one of those particular foods that we sought further detail on, many of these individuals had not actually seen a physician to determine whether or not they had a true allergy to that food and many of these individuals had not seen a physician if they had a reaction to the food, nor did they have an epinephrine pen or uh, auto injector, an epinephrine auto injector, to treat themselves should they have a reaction to that particular food. So uh -huh. I think that this was perhaps the most startling finding uh, by our research team. Mm -hmm. And I guess some of the key recommendations are to one, make sure you get a diagnosis. And two, if you are at risk, to carry an auto-injector with you and understand how to avoid the foods and also how to treat an emergency. For sure, Lori. Uh, certainly, I agree 100% and really want to reiterate the need that if you have a reaction to a food and you're not sure whether or not this represents an allergy, it's necessary to see an allergist so that they can do the proper testing to determine whether or not you do have a food allergy. Exactly. Because of course, if you do, you really need to strictly avoid that food and carry, as you say, an epinephrine auto-injector so that if you do have a reaction, you can properly treat yourself before going to a hospital. Okay. And the other sort of side of the coin is, if you are not allergic to that food, then you do not need to be avoiding that food. So, you know, if you feel you do have an allergy but don't really, then you're unnecessarily restricting your diet. Mm -hmm. Good point. Now, are you seeing, like, a trend? A lot of people talk about, you know, there, there seems to be more food allergy around today than 10, 20 years ago. Does it look like it's on the rise in Canada? So, uh, certainly... Uh, we certainly have the feeling that food allergy is more common now than it was 10 or 20 years ago. And certainly some work in the U.S. has suggested that the prevalence of food allergy probably did increase in the 90s. Uh -huh. We, in Canada, we have looked at the prevalence of peanut allergy in Montreal school children in 2000 and then again in 2005. We found that over that interval, that five-year interval, the prevalence of peanut allergy did not appear to increase. Okay. However, we cannot say that prior to that, the prevalence of peanut allergy did not increase. Okay. So I think certainly in the past it has increased. Whether or not it is now starting to stabilize 
we cannot yet answer that question. Okay. And, and with respect to any differences in adults versus children or income, um, have you seen any trends there with respect to people self-reporting food allergies? So it appears as certainly certain food allergies like peanut and tree nut are more common in children than in adults, whereas other allergies such as fish and shellfish are more common in adults. Uh -huh. An early look at the data suggests that food allergy may be more common in those where the uh, level of household education is higher, but again, we need to look a little more at the data to be certain of these observations. Okay, and certainly with respect to children in schools, in our discussions with principals and educators around the country and, and serving our own membership, uh, some of the more common food allergies within the school system tend to be the peanuts and nuts, but they're certainly seen uh, more kids with other allergies and some with multiple food allergies as well. Did a lot of your uh, or many of your respondents um, have more than one food allergy? Are you seeing that as a trend? So I can't give you exact numbers. Certainly we can look at the data in that fashion, but yes, uh, certainly some of the respondents did have more than one food allergy. Mm -hmm. And of course, for individuals having more than one food allergy, avoiding those foods becomes even more challenging and the risk of having a serious allergic reaction goes up because of course they have two or three or even more things that can cause such a reaction. Okay. So, you know, it seems like it's, it's higher. Uh, it sounds like with the approximately 7% would about 7% would be about two and a half million Canadians with food allergy. It's certainly not a small number anymore. What do you think this means for our Canadian public and our society? So I think that certainly it means it's something that all Canadians need to be aware of. It's not something that only those who are directly affected or have a food allergy in the household, it's not only these people that need to be aware of food allergy, but I think all people really need to be aware of the dangers facing those with a food allergy people uh, preparing foods for individuals who may have a food allergy, uh, people working in restaurants, people working in public institutions. I think they really need to know that food allergy is a real problem mm -hmm. and that it's not something to be easily dismissed because it can lead to a life-threatening event. Okay. Well, I think it's great that your research team has uh, come up with this data because it's a question that Anaphylaxis Canada always gets asked is how common is this and why are we seeing the rise? As you said, uh, some of those questions are going to be out there for a bit until research finds answers. Are you working on other studies right now with your team? Yes, so we're doing a variety of studies. Uh, certainly along the prevalence line, we are hoping to repeat uh, this study that we conducted in 2008-2009. We're hoping to repeat that to see whether or not uh, there are trends in the overall prevalence of food allergy uh, beyond just the trends in peanut allergy that we examined. We're also doing other work to look at potential causes or potential factors that may increase the risk of developing food allergy. Uh, certainly we're looking at doing genetic studies and in fact have just completed a genetic study. And we're also moving, although most of our work in the past has focused on peanut allergy, we're moving beyond that in looking at uh, individuals affected with other types of food allergies. Well, that's great. Well, hopefully you'll be able to uh, speak with us again once those other studies are published. Um, before we sign off, Dr. Clark, is there anything else you want to add for our listeners today? No, I just really want to thank the support of Anaphylaxis Canada who have worked with us over the past several years in this research on food allergy and certainly acknowledge the support of, as well of Health Canada and the Allergen Network of Centers of Excellence. Thank you very much, Dr. Clark. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand by.